Why hello there anxious cynic back again and today we're going to cover five crucial tips for my animator users. The first tip and this is something I practice religiously and I always recommend it to anyone who's having trouble with projects getting corrupted or anything like that and that is to back up your projects constantly. What I'll do is actually go into my my animator's projects folder copy the folder out of my project, save it to an external hard drive, and then as I'm working, once I get to certain milestones in a project, I'll actually separate those backup files. So I'll have one that says like, project backup one, and then sometime later when I go to back it up again, I'll change it to project backup two. So what I'll end up creating is this kind of checkpoint backup save. So if anything were to happen, even if it's something on my end, like if I change something without realizing it and then I finally realize it after hours and hours of working, I may have one of those previous backups that didn't have that. And depending on the scenario, it could save me a lot of time and trouble having to go back and undo things when I can just load up uh, that particular save that was before that error took place. Another thing you can do if this is not feasible or for whatever reason if you haven't done it you forgot or something my animator actually does have its own backups in the project folder so if you go to your project folder within the my animator folder you'll see that there is these one two and three backup files already automatically saved based on your my animator preferences you can actually change this in your settings but by default it's going to give you three different backups and if you need to use one of those all you have to do is change that file extension. So what you should see in your project folder is the project name, and then you'll see dot backup one, dot backup two, dot backup three, and then you'll have the actual project. You'll have the, it'll be the project name dot mi project. So all you have to do is either rename the dot mi project to get it out of the way or delete it if you are sure that it's not working, whatever the case, get rid of that file, move it, rename it, do something. And then on one of those backup files, you go to rename it. And then on the end, instead of dot backup one or dot backup two or whatever, you'll just type dot mi project. And your computer will probably give you a warning, letting you know you're going to change the file type and it may affect programs or whatever. That doesn't matter. Just okay that, save it. And then when you go to open the project, make sure you're opening that file and that'll be one of your backups. So if you ever have any problems, you can use one of these backups and it should get you somewhere where you can get back into your project, hopefully. Tip number two, and this one applies mostly to newbies, and uh, I think most of the, the Minimator community veterans or whatever will agree with me, never use Flatlands. And if you don't know what Flatlands are, it's the dang old default scene in my animator. It's just a flat ground with no scenery or anything. If you want to make projects and you want them to stand out, if you're just practicing, then whatever, do what you want to do, that's fine. If you want to make something and actually get good feedback on it, if you want to actually show that you're putting effort into your animations, never have a scene that is just flatlands and to the best of your ability, hide the flatlands completely don't even show that they exist at all always use scenery and use enough scenery to hide the fact that it's an empty world like you want to make it look like there is an infinite world in the universe of your animation if there's one thing you can do that will ruin the quality of your animation or make people think that you're not good or you're not putting effort into it it is using flatlands if you don't want people to immediately disregard everything you've done, make sure you're using scenery. And like I said, even better, hide the flatlands completely, make it look like it's a normal Minecraft world. All right, so tip number three is focus on making better content, not getting views. So this isn't that common of an issue, but I do get the occasional comment where people were asking for subscribers, asking for shout outs and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, first of all, that's not gonna work. People aren't gonna come to your channel and subscribe just because of a shout out or because you asked them to. And if they were to, that doesn't mean they're gonna be an active viewer. 
the whole point of a subscriber is someone who's actually gonna watch your content. And that's hard enough for people who find your content and subscribe organically, much less if you're asking someone to do it and they come just to oblige your request. What you should be doing is focus on making things you enjoy. Do something that's fun to you and focus on getting better. Every project you should be trying new things and trying to do something that's better than the last project. If all you're doing is trying to get views, that's fine if that's your goal, but if you want to animate and actually enjoy what you're doing, make things you enjoy. Make something that you feel good about making. Make something that even if everyone else hates it, you know that it's something you enjoyed doing and preferably, hopefully, it's better than the last thing you made. If you do that, then you will get better and you will get more viewers. Now there's a whole thing with YouTube and trying to like appease the algorithm and fall into trends and things like that. And if you just want to do all that stuff, if you just want to get views and recognition and stuff, make Monster School because the quality won't matter as much. It'll be a much easier getting into the YouTube search engine results and everything and the algorithm will pick you up better. Uh, just make Monster School animations and have fun getting more views than you could on anything else that was original. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like there, a lot of people will condemn you for doing that or whatever, there's nothing wrong with it. If you wanna make Monster School and get views, then do it. It's still good practice and you'll still get better at animation just by making those. Of course, if you want to eventually do more than that, then make sure you're not stagnating and just making stuff to get views. Always try to make sure, like I said, that the next Monster School is better than the last one. Tip number four is learn patience. This can be very hard, especially if you're just starting out. And it's the same thing as uh, getting the viewers and stuff like we talked about a little bit ago, but you can't expect to be good overnight. I know you're watching Blue Monkey or Slam Macau, Black Plasma Studios, or some other, you know, big Minecraft animator and you, you wanna just immediately jump in and make stuff like that. Well, it's not gonna happen. You got to take your time, make as much as you can, and get better with each project. Just like I said before, high volume of work. Don't focus on making everything perfect because you're not gonna be able to do that right away, especially right away. What you wanna do is just make a bunch of things. Just make as many animations as you can. And like I said, always try to focus on making the next one better. So just because you're making a bunch of stuff doesn't mean you're rushing things all the time. Like you will be learning, getting better. And the better you get, the faster you'll get, and the faster you'll be able to make high quality work in the less amount of time. So what you wanna do is focus on getting experience and that will make you faster, it'll make you better, and in the end, you'll get to that goal you want to. Don't just expect to just hop in, learn how to do one thing a particular way, and then just be the next great animator on YouTube or anything like that. What you wanna do is just focus on practicing. Just like I said in the last tip, make things you wanna make, make things that you would wanna see, make things that are fun to you, and the skill will come naturally. You won't even have to worry about uh, how good or bad you are because you'll be enjoying what you're doing and the result of what you're doing and the skill and the views and all that stuff will come naturally. So just have fun with it. All right, and our fifth and final tip of this video is going to be something that's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. Don't listen to the community. If you go to the Minimator forums and you post your work, sometimes there is good technical advice there. But if you ask me, and maybe I'm a bit of a, a negative Nancy here, but if you ask me, the Minimator community is trash. It is not good. Uh, it's a bunch of other kids trying to insult kids who make things that they don't like or whatever, and they typically enjoy putting down on work more than they enjoy actual good work that's done. So if you use the Minimator forums, have fun with it, post your work there all you want, but be aware that the criticism you'll get there and the response you'll get there is pretty much irrelevant. You can pretty much ignore it. They're not your viewers. They're just people in the community who either try to make things with Minimator, do make things with Minimator, or they've just fallen into the community and they don't even use Minimator anymore and they're just there to trash talk other people or something, like whatever it is they're doing. But regardless of how you perceive it, 
I would say the best thing to do is ignore the community. Use it as a resource for technical information or just, you know, if you want to go and make friends there or whatever, that's fine. But as far as like posting your work there and getting valuable feedback, it's possible. But uh, just keep in mind that you probably shouldn't take it to heart, whatever it is. So that's it. That is my five crucial tips for Minimator. Allow me to stress that's just my opinion. Those are just my thoughts and hopefully some helpful little nuggets of information for those of you out there who are struggling with any of these things. But that's going to be it for me. So thanks for listening. I hope it was helpful. Hope it was enjoyable to some extent. And I will see you guys in the next video.